I see a lot of new developers and I see their games and their code and it, things are just like really messy and tangled up. So in the spirit of trying to untangle that code, I want to introduce another tool that we have at our disposal called the scriptable object. I have this scene here, I have a player that can move around and at the top left you'll see I have a name text and a health text. And what I would like to do is create some sort of very, very shallow, simple player class that we can just plug and play in the inspector and then immediately see the changes and the differences. So let me show you how to go about that creating a scriptable object. It's really not too important what I have actually in my scene right now, but let's go ahead and show you how to actually create a scriptable object in the first place. To do that, we can go down to our assets folder and right click and create a new C -sharp script. And I'll call this something like player class. And so I'll show you how to actually create a scriptable object and then I'll stop and kind of talk about it in a minute. So right now you'll notice whenever we make a new class, we actually by default inherit from this mono behavior. And a mono behavior is required for us to click and drag these scripts onto our game objects and attach them as components. And that's all well and good, but let's say we had something like a fighter class or like a mage class, right? We don't want to attach these mage class scripts onto the player. We'd rather just have something like a player controller and we plug those different classes into it, if that makes sense. So it acts more like a data container than it does like a functional script, uh, but it can be. We're going to keep this pretty simple. So let's show you what you can do. You don't need starter update. And we, like I said before, we don't actually want to inherit from mono behavior. What we want to inherit from is a scriptable object. Uh, and this on its own is actually not enough for us. But at the top here, above our class, what we want to do in square brackets is say create asset menu. And this is an important tag because now if I go back to Unity without anything else in this script, we actually already set up our first scriptable object. I can now right click in our assets folder menu and look, go up to create. And right here, we have player class. So I can create this, and I can call this something like fighter. But you'll notice there's actually nothing in here right now. We didn't actually set up our script with anything interesting. But before we get into actually building this out a little bit more, I want to make sure we actually understand what is happening here. In this script, we're basically saying this thing is a scriptable object. We can create it in the asset menu. And when we do, we now have this actual object in our project directory that is being saved. And similar to a prefab, we can actually pass this object into our scripts as parameters and then consume the data that's stored on them. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So what do we want our class to actually store? There's a lot of really valuable things you could do with this, but for my stupid example, let's just update our name text, our health text, and maybe we actually wanna update our player too. So we'll change like the color of the player and well, we could just do like move speed or something simple. So we'll do those four cases. So let's start with the name, right? So we'll say public string name. We can have a public float for health. We could have a public float for move speed. And then also if we wanted to change the color, we could literally just do public color uh, and we'll call it color, that's fine. So after we save that off, if we go back to this fighter scriptable object we made before, we now have a couple data fields in our inspector that we can actually play around with. So let's fill this out. I could call this fighter. I could have health. Let's say it's like 200. The move speed, let's say he's really slow. So we'll say two. Um, we'll give him a color. We'll make him red. And so the point of actually doing this is you now have this object you can pass into your individual components and consume the data from them without actually making a hard reference between this player game object and these canvas health and name text objects, right? You're keeping them separated, you're keeping things decoupled, uh, and you can actually take this way further, which I'll make in future tutorials. But this is a good starting place, and it's more just like an introduction to the topic. Anyway, another big benefit of doing this approach with scriptable objects is you can just make as many of these as you want. So we can actually create another class here and call it something like mage. Uh, and we can just look, type in mage, set the health maybe to like 75. Maybe they're faster and they're blue. Or you can make another one called Rogue, et cetera, et cetera. I think you guys get it. You can make a, like a hundred of these classes very quickly. You don't have to know any programming at this point. Like once you have the script set up, you can just make these things and plug and play with them in your inspector and your hierarchy. So yeah, it's really speeds up development once you have the groundwork set up. But now let's actually talk about how you actually pull the data out of these things. We have a couple of them made. So I'm gonna create one more script 
I'm gonna create a player UI script. So we're gonna have create C sharp script. I'll call it player UI. And I'll just click and drag it onto our canvas and open it up. We'll leave the start method, but the first thing we wanna do now is actually make a reference to our scriptable object. So we can say public player class and player class. And now with this player class object, we can actually look at our variable that we have and we get access to our name, our move speed, our health, and our color, which is great. Those are the four fields we set up. But in order to update these texts, we need a reference to those objects. So at the top of this, I'll import text mesh pro because that's what I'm using quick. Uh, and I'll just make two quick references. We'll say public text mesh pro UGUI, name text, and health text. The same thing. In the inspector, we could pass in, say, this fighter class. We could pass in our name text and our health text. And then we could just simply say name text dot text is equal to player class dot name and health text dot text is equal to the player class dot health. And since this is a float, we have to say to string. So at this point, we expect this text to update to fighter and the health to be 200. And there we go, in the top left it says fighter and health 200. And so to really illustrate the power of these things, I could just click and drag on the mage into that slot, play again, and look, now we have the mage with health of 75. And if we wanted to keep adding on to this, right, we want now the player to change its color and the move speed. Well, I have this player controller class, and I know there's like already a lot of stuff here. You can just ignore that. At the top of this, I could just make a public player class reference similar to the UI. I'll call that player class. I could just quickly make a reference to our move speed and set that to the player class move speed. I could say get component and get our sprite renderer and set the color to whatever's on the player class color. And then just like our UI class, we could drag say the mage in. And now check that out. We have our mage name in the top left, our health, our player is now blue and I can move pretty quickly. If I plug the fighter into these different slots, then I move really slowly and I'm red and I have more health and it says fighter. And in this case, it's not the best because you have to make sure you have the right uh, scriptable object plugged into both the canvas and the player objects for this example. But you can definitely take this further and make things even more decoupled than what I have here. This is just a good introduction. You don't always have to use mono behaviors and prefabs in your games. There's a lot of other tools at your disposal, scriptable objects being one of the most important ones. And so I'm gonna actually make follow-up tutorials to this after, showing you how to do some of these more advanced, interesting things with scriptable objects. So definitely subscribe and stick around for that. I hope this helped you out. Please leave comments if you're confused about this or you don't understand, but this is just the first step in really trying to decouple your code, which is really gonna help you out in the long run and ultimately just make you a better programmer. So thanks for watching. Thank you.